Chapter 19. The Concentration of Energy, Beliefs, and the Present Point of Power The concentration of energy follows your beliefs. Many beliefs, not negative in themselves but overemphasized, lead to what certainly appear to be negative results. This material is highly important to many of you who find yourselves in situations in which you are not pleased. I am using Rupert as an example for several reasons. Many of you have a tendency to believe that anyone with such abilities as Rupert has has no problems or challenges. Rupert has often said, Some of my correspondents expect me to be completely healthy, wealthy, and wise, and indeed beyond any human feelings. And he is quite correct. Numbers of you are looking for a state of quote-unquote peace, in which there is a static sort of bliss, with all questions forever answered, and all problems solved. Some of you think that this will somehow be miraculously accomplished for you. If you recognized the power of your own being, you would know that it ever seeks greater realms of creativity and experience, in which new challenges are inherent, for all problems are challenges. In Rupert's case, he began with a group of ideas and beliefs that only became restrictive when carried to extremes. In your own experiences, many of you find yourselves concentrating upon certain areas of activity with such energy that you ignore others, considering them restrictions. Rupert's condition involved a situation in this life. Some of you may find yourselves concentrating upon the physical aspects of existence, which are themselves quite legitimate, but to the exclusion of other important elements. In larger terms, such focusing in particular areas can involve an entire life situation, reincarnationally speaking, where you choose ahead of time, so to speak, to concentrate your attention in certain areas rather than others. You may pick for yourself a body that does not perform normally, or a mind that is not up to par in usual terms. Your given situation at birth, therefore, is one in which you cannot manipulate adequately in whatever way you have chosen. You have decided upon a situation in which a critical organic lack or disability is involved, and are born with a severe disease, for example, then that is the context in which you will experience this particular focus in corporeal reality. There will be a reason for it, and the reason will lie in those abilities that you have left free and open for yourself to pursue. All existences are simultaneous. Within the bounds of creaturehood, certain things are possible and certain things are not. You cannot regenerate a limb or grow a new one. You can cure yourself of a quote-unquote incurable disease if you realize that your point of power is in the present. Whatever your situation, you have chosen it for a reason. If it involves a circumstance that cannot be altered in physical terms, then you have settled upon it as a framework in order to enhance and use other abilities in concentrated form. The main point is not to concentrate upon the liabilities, but to pursue those abilities that you have, for the great energies of your personality will be directed in those avenues. Now, Rupert was working with alterations of consciousness this afternoon. At the same time, he had the radio playing softly. The rock music program was interrupted by an announcement having to do with the Indianapolis speed car racing exhibition. One driver had already been severely injured, and the race, put off on that account, and because of inclement weather, finally began today. As it progressed, the radio announcements continued also, and Rupert learned that another very severe accident had occurred. Besides this, a man, not a driver, was killed by an emergency vehicle speeding to the scene. The victim was connected with the race, however. As he resumed quote-unquote normal consciousness, Rupert found himself wondering about the great violence involved and the entire situation in which such people place themselves. He often has the radio on when he is working with alternate states of consciousness, by the way, using it as a point of reference. Some of the material in the last chapter should help to explain the reasons for frameworks in which violence is built in, so to speak, and indeed becomes a challenging context through which reality is perceived. The situation is one of danger, yet is chosen by those involved, and is not inflicted upon them. In somewhat the same way, entire life contexts are selected that might appear to be incomprehensible, foolhardy, or even insane to an observer. 
these lifetime organizations may involve very drastic physical disabilities from birth. From the outside, it seems impossible that anyone would choose such a background, such a highly restricted or even painful situation in which to live. From that viewpoint, birth defects or lifetime diseases of any kind make no sense. No one begins a race with a handicap, you may say, but that is obviously not the case. Individuals have often chosen such situations precisely as incentives, and many great men have done so. This does not mean that such disabilities are necessary. At any point that an individual realizes his point of power in the present, he will not need a barrier to test himself against or to focus him in what he thinks of as the proper direction. You live many lives simultaneously. You often think of these as reincarnational existences, one before the other. If you are severely ill and believe that the reasons for your symptoms exist in a past life, that you must quote-unquote put up with it, then you will not realize that your point of power is in the present, and you will not believe in the possibility of recovery. Again, even so-called incurable diseases can be healed as long as this does not involve regenerations not possible within the context of creaturehood. In your terms, birth defects of whatever kind are chosen before this life. This is done for many different reasons, just as people choose to be ill in this life, regardless of the duration involved. That is, a certain psychic framework is set up through which an individual decides, quote-unquote, ahead of time, to experience an entire life situation. Some information on this has been given in my other writings. A person with several existences stressing intellectual achievement might purposely then decide upon a life in which mental abilities are beyond him, and the emotions allowed a full play that he had denied then, quote-unquote, earlier. Since all existences are simultaneous, this simply means his stressing certain aspects in this life, at the expense of others, you would say, and setting up a framework that may seem to be limiting. On the other hand, the personality involved may see this as a most rewarding and expansive experience, in which the emotions are allowed freedoms ordinarily denied. Characteristically, some personalities prefer lifetime experiences in which accomplishment and development follows an even course. Others demand great contrast. One of the latter may be miserably poor in one life, luxuriously rich in another, an intellectual giant in still another, a great athlete, and then a complete invalid. Individual differences operate then in the kinds of life situations chosen. In many cases, it is the family rather than the incapacitated member who questions and does not understand, as in the cases of severely mentally retarded children, for example. Yet in all instances, not only do children choose their parents ahead of time, but parents choose their children, of course. In such a situation, there are fulfillments to be gained from the parents' standpoint. There are always opportunities of growth and unusual creativity possible under those conditions for all involved. That is why the framework was chosen. The same applies to seeming tragedies such as accidents or severe illnesses that come at any time. On an individual basis, a grave illness, for instance, will represent the adoption of a particular highly intense focus in which a given aspect of usual experience is deliberately cut out or denied. The context of life itself must then be magnified along other lines. In somewhat the same manner, this also applies to those born in extreme poverty or in the most seemingly unfortunate of family situations. The life challenge is inherent within the problem itself and springs from it. Usually, though not always, a peculiar personal achievement results precisely because of the given difficulty. Now, this accomplishment need not involve some great artwork or invention or political leadership, for example, though it may. Often, the successful activity represents a challenge on the part of the personality who sees it in terms of psychological creativity and the overall enrichment of experience. Those involved, such as family, will have acquiesced to the situation quote-unquote earlier. Often, particularly in the case of mental or physical birth defects, the incapacitated person will be accepting that role not only because of personal reasons, he or she will also be choosing that part for the family as a whole. Highly intelligent parents, therefore, may find themselves with a retarded child. If they place a great value upon intellect at the expense of the emotions, then the child may be acting out for them 
of which they are so afraid themselves. A birth defect is obvious and sets up certain conditions that cannot be ignored. Many ordinary illnesses also involve the family group to some degree. The predominating beliefs of the sick person will always be paramount, however. The group situation will encompass an acquiescence on the part of the other family members. Now understand that the same thing applies in the case of unusual achievements. In those instances, the achiever's beliefs predominate, and yet apart from this, he may also be acting out the unrealized aspirations of his family members or of the group in which he is intimately involved. There will always be reasons for such interrelationships. Many great contrasts of a social nature have the same kind of inner meaning. Here, whole groups of individuals chose particular life situations in which, for example, poverty and illness predominate, while other areas of the world, or of any given nation, enjoy the highest technological advances, wealth, and prosperity. Separately, each personality has a private reason for such an affiliation, but on other levels, through the contrasting focuses of poverty and wealth, scientific accomplishments, or the lack of them, opposites are brilliantly apparent. Technological progress, followed as a main focus, automatically portrays its benefits and its disadvantages. A nation which pursues this course is like one individual who primarily follows a strictly quote-unquote objective male externally oriented path in terms of your Western understanding. Certain values have been stressed in your country, particularly in the recent present. These attributes were pursued at the expense of others for individual reasons and those en masse. The rest of the world agreed to such actions, however, and various portions of it took entirely different courses, so that in your experience, global society would show a kaleidoscope of varying focuses and their results. On a much smaller scale and to different degrees, any tribe, town, family, or group will show the same tendencies, and from the shared experience, each individual will learn and grow. A person may choose a great talent instead, through which he or she will perceive reality and concentrate all experience. This will serve as a formidable focus, yet by its nature, it may often preclude other experiences that many individuals find quite normal. Some artists with great ability may shut out intellectual maturity, utilizing native emotional qualities at such an extent and with such intensity that the mental reasoning faculties are largely shunted aside. Without rational illumination, the emotional elements may be so unwieldy that the artist, for all of his spontaneous expression, cannot relate in any kind of permanent situation of an intimate nature, for reason and emotion are natural counterparts. Someone else may choose to focus upon intellectual achievement to such a degree that he shuts out all true closeness, and though he can accept a permanent relationship, he will not experience the emotional richness that others may derive from a much briefer encounter. Therefore, each of you choose, ahead of time in your terms, the kind of framework through which you will contend with this life situation. This applies personally and collectively.